So prior to the 20th century, it really is difficult to do women's history in South Carolina. Not because there weren't talented, extraordinary women, there certainly were, but we know very little about them. Hey, this is Nick Butler, historian of the Charleston County Public Library, and welcome to Pitt Street in downtown Charleston. I'm out here on this beautiful fall day to talk a little bit about women's history in South Carolina. So unless you've been hiding under a rock, you know there's been a lot of news coverage about Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the late Supreme Court Justice, and the efforts to fill her seat. There's been a lot of tension, a lot of attention in the media about women in prominent positions in our government and women in the legal profession specifically. And so people have asked me, hey Nick, what are, what's the story with, with the great legal minds uh, in women's history in South Carolina? And honestly, there really isn't that much before the 20th century. And trying to explain why women's history is such a kind of a, a difficult topic to grab hold of in early South Carolina is a rather long conversation, but I've got some resources on the library website to really try to encapsulate the story of women's rights and the lack of women's rights in the early days of South Carolina. So here at number five Pitt Street in Charleston, there's a relatively new historical marker commemorating the work of the Pollitzer Sisters of Charleston. This was put up in 2006, so it's still fairly fresh in many people's minds. So the Pollitzer Sisters, there was Anita and Mabel and Carrie, were all active in the 20th century uh, fighting for women's rights, for women's right to vote and other educational opportunities as well. And they are part of, the Pollitzer sisters form part of an episode I did for the Charleston Time Machine a couple of years ago, episode number 15, excuse me, episode number 59, where I talked about 10 progressive women of early 20th century Charleston. So if you'd like to learn more about the Pollitzer sisters and some of their other contemporaries, both black and white women active in the Charleston area, check out episode 59. Prior to the 20th century, though, it was, it's really difficult to do women's history in South Carolina, not because there were no extraordinary or talented women in South Carolina. There certainly were, but there were a number of legal and cultural constraints that really kept women inside kind of a cultural box that prevented them from exploiting their full potential. So, for example, think about this. Prior to 1865, the majority of women in South Carolina were enslaved. And the majority of the free women in South Carolina never learned to read and write. So we have very few records from women. We, we can't hear their voices in the historical documents that survive. And so in order to really delve into the issues of women's history in the early centuries of South Carolina, you really have to put on your detective's cap and dive into the historical documents and try to peel back the layers of history. So to help people understand those legal and cultural constraints that dominated women's lives for the first 250 years of South Carolina, I put together a series of podcasts of several years ago, episodes 12, 13, and 14 on the Charleston Time Machine, talking about what I called a woman's progress in early South Carolina. So by woman's progress, I mean a journey through life. So I'm taking the evidence of what really dominated most women's lives in early South Carolina and divided it into four periods during their natural lives, going from infancy up to the state of spinsterhood in their teenage years to the era of marriage and then widowhood. And so for each of these four stages of life, there are different legal parameters that control what women can do and cannot do. And it's a really complicated topic that I tried to simplify by giving some examples of women, both black and white, free and enslaved, who were part of this journey through life that I'm calling a woman's progress. So for example, we know uh, that women who gave birth to children were not automatically the legal guardians of those children. In order to maintain legal control over their children, women had to go to court to get guardianship. And that was something that the law 
gave sparingly. It wasn't something natural like we think of it today. So it's a really complicated topic. If you'd like to learn more about women's history, women's rights, and women's accomplishments in the early centuries of South Carolina, I encourage you to go to the Charleston County Public Library's website. Check out the Charleston Time Machine, especially those uh, episodes 12, 13, and 14 about a woman's progress in South Carolina. And those 20th century women like the Pulitzer Sisters uh, in episode number 59. And as a special treat, if you'd like to know the interesting story of one specific woman uh, named Elizabeth McQueen in the 1740s. Check out episode number 127 about Elizabeth McQueen, who was an unwed teenage mother accused of murdering her newborn child. So check it out on the Charleston Time Machine on the Charleston County Public Library website. In the meantime, I'll see you in the future.